Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at this Krauss Heinz Type DT. So I received this signal a few weeks ago from a Facebook Marketplace listing, and it was quite cheap for what it is, and it came with a few extra lenses, which made it even better, so I was quite happy to have found this. Now, of course, it's not perfect. It's got um, the typical wear on the paint, and the hanger was missing when I first got it. This is a hanger off of a different um, light, so it doesn't. it's not an exact match, and it's painted black because it was in really rough shape. So the black paint uh, helps hide a little bit of that, though I would like to find a, an actual Krauss Heinz hanger for this fixture. So this is the Krauss Heinz Type DT Dust Tight Signal, which was made, I think they started making it in the late 40s up until the 50s, and was replaced by the Type M, which has a much more traditional design than this. It's a lot more of a basic fixture, and which um, made it a lot cheaper to make, and it's a little, probably a lot more reliable as far as... Um, the signal goes. So the D and DT are uh, two signals that get mixed up a little bit and really the only way to tell them apart is the reflector inside. The D has a cast reflector um, holder while the DT has a stamped piece and we'll see that once we open it up but from the outside I don't think there's really any way to tell them apart. Now, some people get confused by thinking that the signals with the cast visors are the Type D because that would be an older design, but the um, cast visor and screw-on visor, as you see here, was an option that was available for both the D and DT signals. So this signal is just a beacon as a single section. I would like to maybe find two more sections to make it into a three section red yellow green sec signal but these things are pretty expensive so I have to just kind of wait until I can find parts that are at a reasonable price so because this is not a three color signal this is a beacon that would hang in the middle of an intersection and it would just flash on and off at either 50 or 60 flashes a minute and I feel like the um, earlier ones were at 50, so a little slower, but I've got this set somewhere in the middle, and we'll see that once I turn it on. So let's take a closer look at the signal. The hanger on top, which is painted black. Uh, of course, it would be better if it was painted yellow, but it was in such bad shape that if I painted it a brighter color, it would really show all those imperfections, and I really want to get a Krauss Heinz hanger for this anyway. So I don't really think this um, hanger is a particular uh, signal manufacturer it's from. I think this is just a part that's made by another company and a bunch of different um, signal manufacturers or whoever sells these uses these and supplies them with the signal. Then we'll look at the top here. It's a very um, ornate design. Later versions would just have a... Um, flat top or a um, slightly less extravagant design that would have this tier here. But because it does, it does give the signal quite a tall appearance. You've got four acorn nuts here that are holding four rods that go all the way through the signal and out the bottom. This one is also number one, two, three, four on the four directions. Uh, pretty much all of the other ones I've seen are marked north, south, east, and west, so I don't know why this has numbers and all the other ones I've seen don't, but that's how this signal is. These top pieces are made of cast aluminum, I think they're kind of delicate, so it's a nice piece to find intact. Of course, the paint's rough, but what do you expect? It's got a nice overhang over the top of the signal to keep water from getting in. And then on the bottom, the overhang is much less. The bottom piece is almost the same, except it's not marked with the four directions. And on one of these sides, it's got Chris Hines embossed, but I don't know which 
side it is. No, it's the other side. Let's flip this over. And no, nope, it's the first one. Okay, so there's cross lines on the bottom there. All right, so we've seen that. So the bottom piece here is basically the same shape as the top. It's slightly different. It's got these ribs here. And of course, it's designed to fit inside of the section instead of over top. See those same acorn nuts where those rods stick through the signal. And then we've got this main body section here, which is a little um, piece here made of four flat plates that are um, held together with screws, two screws on each one of these. And we'll see that once we open it up. The doors are very nice. They've got a little um, molded detail here around the lens. Um, and then one of the um, most distinct features of these uh, D and DT signals are the latches here, which are different than pretty much any other traffic signal latch. Those here, these use a wing nut. Um, some use thumb screws, but I think the wing nuts are probably the most common used closing mechanism for these. So. These latches are quite nice. They're pretty intricate and they look really good. The hinges on these are also different. These are like a little door hinge. Um, see how that looks. Other signals used hinges that were molded into the side of the fixture that stick out quite a ways. The Type M also had the um, hinges that stick out, but they were designed in such a way that they were a little bit more hidden than most signals. And then the Type R is just your traditional traffic light. So that's the outside completely covered. Let's go ahead, open this up and see what's on the inside. Putting up side number two. And now we can see the reflector and the lens. We'll start by looking at the lens. Let's just turn this around. So we can get a good look at this door. We'll take a look at the inside of these latches. Just kind of clip onto the inside parts here. Um, pretty simple. You have the gasket here, which is, and this one is pretty much ruined because it's so old and it's exposed to a lot of heat. Um, this only has two original gaskets and they're both in pretty sorry shape. This would originally had a felt, uh, or not a felt, um, braided cloth gasket. However, those were all destroyed, of course. So I need to get um, some new stuff. I found that clothesline works pretty well for replacing these gaskets. So it's a pretty easy fix. Just glue some cord in there and it will be just as good as new. I've got some embossing here in the top corner to look at. Now on the top is the um, logo of whoever made these pieces and I don't know who that is. So if someone knows who made these metal parts, I'll leave that in the comment section because I don't know. So the lens here is your cross Heinz type T1. Uh, typically referred to as the smiley lens uh, for the large uh, crescent shaped piece in the bottom that is made to um, shine light down and out towards pedestrians and vehicle traffic right underneath the light. Here we've got the door hinges and the lens tabs. Now before I go any further, I'd like to talk a little bit more about len these lenses. So let me move this back out of the way. And I've got three smiley lenses here. Now they're not yellow, but they'll do the thing. These are um, signals here. That both of these, these two came with a signal, but what I've got here are actually three different smiley lenses. Um, I don't know if you'll notice, but the um, molds are different. This one, the beads are 
a little more cylindrical, if you can tell. Let's try to focus on these. The beads are a cylinder, basically, and then these ones, and these ones are more conical shaped. So that's um, the first difference. So when you look at these right on, they look very different. The lens tabs on these cast parts, these have, this one has four indents. This one has no indents. And this one has little raised bumps on the edge, like the Type-T lens had. So I'm considering this is the oldest um, of these, but I don't know. They've all got the Crow Science Cube logo there. They all have different sizes, though. This one has a rather large Krauss Heinz lens, or this one. This one's pretty big, and then don't, this red lens is a little bit smaller. So there's just some minor differences. These are all T1 lenses, though. Well. So now, let's take a look at the reflector. It's got this piece of metal that's stamped, and it's got four screws here. The reflector here, which is glass, and silvered on the other side, and then the bulb, which is not the original bulb. This is a little 40 watt appliance bulb, and actually I've got the uh, little uh, package here that it came with. And I just put these in the uh, fixtures just to reduce the wattage and to make it a little dimmer. This is though the original bulb that it came with. It's a Duro test. Uh, of course, the camera's not going to focus. So, it says Duro test. That's just um, the brand of the bulb or the make. So, we pull on this. It says pull to open. So, we will do that. And now we need to look at the inside. You'll see again, this is stamped. You've got a little cork gasket and a plastic socket and a little screw there to hold everything together your wires come out the back four of those same reflectors and the terminal block here which is the same terminal block used on the three color signals and uh, don't worry about my wiring it's all secure it just does not look very good i need to it would be much better with the proper connectors we have the little um controller in here that doesn't really fit in here because there's no flat surface in this but it is stuck down and it's not going to move anywhere that little plug in the bottom and then these are the four tie rods that are holding the signal together if you can see so those go all the way through and hold it together the door has these cast in supports for the reflector and then when we look inside, we can see the screw that's holding the section together, just barely, but it's there. It's got four of those, or eight of those screws that hold this thing together. And that's really all there is to it. This is very basic. It does its job, and it does look quite nice. So I'm going to get this closed up. And set up the camera and we can turn it on. All right, so if, um, I'll turn this on now. We're just going to plug it in and it'll turn it on right away. So there it is, flashing. This is what it does. It doesn't stop flashing. And this just tells you whether you want to proceed with caution or stop, depending on how you um, come up on the signal. So I'll turn up light to get a little better effect there, a little better contrast. And I'll also turn the signal around so you can see the red side. Pretty bright, even though it only has 40 watt bulbs in it. Much less than the standard traffic signal bulb. Let's turn it so you get a 45 degree shot of the two lenses. So, that's my signal. It's pretty simple. And these are still somewhat common, although to find them in service, especially incandescent, it's very hard. There are a few of them still around that are LED, but of course the LED signals 
uh, just don't have the same charm as the old incandescent ones, especially with that smiley lens in there. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And that's it. Bye for now.